Hello everyone, I am Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. In the headlines, doctors continue to monitor cricketer Tyrone Theophil as he remains in a coma following successful surgery in Martinique. UWI scientists say effusive eruption at La Souffrains in Vincent has potential to turn explosive. And incoming chairman of CARICOM, Dr. Keith Rowley, says we have the tools to make 2021 the year of CARICOM. The details coming up. We are resilient and we will get through this together. But these are stressful times and it's important to also practice good self-care. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, anxious or afraid. But there is hope. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, stay in touch with your community and know that you are not alone. We're in this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always-on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. First up in the news, the mother of Winod Island's Volcanoes batsman Tyron Theophil confirmed to Channel 5 News on Thursday that her son was still in a coma in a Martinique hospital. This after he had successful surgery for skull fractures suffered during a bike accident near the post office in Roseau on the Roseau Bay front on Christmas Day. Theophil had been in a coma in intensive care at the Dominica China Friendship Hospital prior to him being airlifted to Martinique. His family provided Channel 5 News with pictures of the doctors who performed the surgery late Sunday night. Channel 5 News was informed by the family on Tuesday that the doctors were waiting for Tyrone to wake up from the induced coma. The doctor says the surgery went well and they were hoping that uh, when he wakes up he'll be suitable, it'll be, he'll be stable I should say, and the surgery would have been successful. They go on to say, we must also keep in mind that along the way, there may be complications, as it's a very serious head injury that Tyrone suffered. Kavim Hodge has been described as a role model for the young people of this country. The young cricketer received confirmation this week that he will form part of the West Indies team to tour Bangladesh from February next year. His father, Alexander Hodge, believes Kavim will rise to the occasion and he has what it takes to be a role model. Those things are going to come naturally. Kavim is a natural, especially when it comes to, I mean, his, his department, dealing with people, his personality, you know. He is going to do well. And anywhere Kavim goes, both regional and internationally, Kavim is spotted as being outstanding as to how he carries himself about. Um, even whilst he was, well, he just, if last year he finished UWE, um, he has a degree in sports science. And um, everybody has a lot of, a lot of great praises for him, especially in Barbados. I mean, the only thing Kevin didn't get in Barbados is a, is a Bajan passport. I mean, he's loved in Barbados. Everybody loves Kevin. You know, so I mean, basically, he is going to continue to make this nation proud. He, he loves his game, and that's what Kevin has over most of the, 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 the guys, the cricketers. He loves this game, so no matter what happens, you know, the, the complications, he just put a blind eye to it and, and keep on playing and keep on getting better and better at, at his craft. News of Kavim Hodge's selection to join the West Indies team on its Bangladesh tour seems to have renewed the faith of some Dominican fans who had all but given up on the team. As a matter of fact, two people, two of my friends came past by me this morning and said, man, wow, I'm... I'm I'm finally going to start looking at West Indies after, <laughs> after taking an exile, I've had what it to say, after taking an exile for a while. So, yeah, yeah, um, a lot of people, um, and um, Kavim, I, I mean, he does it, well, I, I, I tell him so, has the support of 150% of Dominican. Everybody, I mean, every, every other person shows, I mean, wants to know what's happening with Kavim, and, I know he's not going to let down. He's going to make his nation proud. 
When he gets in there, he's going to do what needs to be done and, and, and take whatever, take our nation and take what he's game to the next level. Playing test cricket for the West Indies team is a dream come true for Kavim. It means a whole lot uh, coming from a small island like Dominica. You know, there's only a handful of individuals who have played test cricket. And these are one of the few things that really drive and push me. Um, you know, during the process of getting to this point, you know, I've had a lot of well wishes and a lot of support from friends and family and, and strangers just looking on, you know, so it's, it's a really great feeling to be able to represent my country um, and it's something that I'm, you know, looking to continue for as long as I can. It's a really good feeling. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of ups and downs. Um, you know, it's been a lot of hard work. You know, I think that the hard work is only now starting. But you know, I just need to remember that you know it's still a game of cricket. It's just a matter of you know getting my mind right um, for this level of cricket. Uh, in terms of you know the, the uncertain times that we have faced, I think it's just a matter of trying to remain focused on the task at hand. I mean, it's it's deemed to be the new norm in terms of the bubble life and and traveling and COVID. So it's just a matter of being safe. You know, taking precaution wherever we can. Uh, and the most important thing is try not to make that affect, you know, performances on the field. You know, so it, it's something I'm really looking forward to. Uh, I'm really happy for the opportunity and I'm just looking to grasp it with, with both hands. Kavim says he knows it will be a challenge playing Bangladesh on their turf, but he's looking forward to giving the West Indies team his best. Yeah, it's always a challenge coming up against any country um, in your home turf, but it's something that I'm, I'm really looking forward to. It's always important to you know, to start with and make, make the most of every opportunity that is given. So it's something that I'm, I'm really looking to to cherish and grab with both hands. Um, my thing for me, like I said earlier, mindset is, is really important, you know, so that would play a key, key role in how I go about doing things. So for me, it's just a matter of, you know, buckling down and understanding the conditions and trying to, you know, go about the best way possible in order to, to do what I can for the team. Be warned, you might find some of the footage in our next story a little disturbing. So if you are the type who gets spooked by watching Shark Week in the dark in HD or has hot racing nightmares all week about sharks coming up through your toilet, then you might understand the visceral primal reaction to the shark caught in the Taro area this week. An unwelcome guest, you might say. The reaction to the shark by those who caught it and the level of curiosity by the onlookers is not all that surprising when you consider that sharks this size are rarely seen in our waters and most of the people in the crowd may have seen a Jaws movie in their lifetime. Few animals are as terrifying to humans as sharks. These sharp-toothed, quick-swimming predators haunt the dreams of many a beachgoer and even those who seldom visit the shore. But statistically, sharks pose very little threat to humans. As we head into another holiday weekend, the president of the Nature Island Riders Club is again appealing to bikers to make safety a priority. Channel 5 News spoke with Carlos Charles this week on the importance of bikers wearing safety gear in light of the recent accidents. While more than a few of the bike accidents recorded here involve scooters, Charles says it's not true that bigger, more expensive bikes are safer. Paying attention to the warnings could save lives. No, there's not greater safety in these larger bikes because as evidence in the last death in the motorcycle, it's a, it was a 1,000 bike. So the, what is, what's happening is with the scooters, guys are more relaxed. I mean, it's just a scooter. That's, that's how it's looked at, it's just a scooter. But it's just as bad you can get an accident. If you, if you can recall if over the past couple of months, that general, that general um, um, Portersville area intersection between um, the 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 Nassif, the Nassif um, Valley Engineering and so on. There have been a lot of accidents happening there. Another thing, though, I w I will on a lighter note, motor vehicles are less are less um, courteous to motorcycle riders. We have experienced that in Dominica as compared to traveling overseas. The, 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 the drivers, if you win, win St. Lucia, you meet a line of traffic, the drivers will make space for the bikes to pass. In Dominica, a driver will try and block you. 
to prevent the bike from passing in a tra in a in a long traffic area. Granted, there are there are um, riders who do the extreme and and overtake vehicles on the left on on the right, and it any oh, sp it, out of traffic. right. But it's 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 a a matter of being courteous. If you with Dominica, we drive on the left. If you if there's a, a, a traffic and you're in a on a bike, you're not going to stay behind of a long traffic. You'll always try to, you know, make space for you to pass. The drivers can simply give a little, allow a little space for the bikes to pass and let them go on their way. But riders as well should be alert. You get into an intersection. I mean, you cannot just assume the vehicle is going to stay there. You cannot just assume that. It the the, the risk is there that they might turn. And who's going to feel the pain? Not the guy in the in, in the in the truck or in the bus. He's not going to feel anything. He, I mean, he'll get he'll get charged. But you're the one going to be lied on in the hospital. So you should protect yourself. It's not just wearing your helmet. It's all road etiquette as well. But be respecting the road, respecting your motorcycle on the road. That's probably one of the the, the reasons why why um bikers wear or have loud pipes on their bikes. Loud pipes save lives. <laughs> It's, it's, it's been said in, in around the biker community, loud pipes save lives. So if a car can hear your bike, they'll know they'll be more alert that there's a bike coming. So they will, you know, they'll ease a little more to the left, let the bike pass on the right. So, but, so if that, I would like to encourage the bikers to not pass the vehicles on the left. Dominica, we drive on the left, pass them on the right. You are watching Channel 5 News. Coming up, St. Vincent adjusts quarantine requirements to facilitate scientists coming in to monitor the Lassoufre eruption. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new All-In Bundle. With Flow, it only gets better. We are strong, we are resilient, and we will get through this together. But these are stressful times, and it's important to also practice good self-care. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, anxious, or afraid, but there is hope. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, stay in touch with your community, and know that you are not alone. We're in this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. Incoming Chairman of CARICOM, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley, wants 2021 to be the year that we make CARICOM work for us as we build back better and construct the resilient society that will provide a safe, prosperous and viable community for all. Dr. Rowley says we have the tools to do it and 2021 must be the year of CARICOM. The Trinidad and Tobago Prime Minister says CARICOM enters 2021 with renewed hope for emerging from the darkness of the past year. The new CARICOM chairman says the promising light at the end of the tunnel provided by the vaccine for COVID-19 provides the possibility of relief from the health and socio-economic challenges posed by the pandemic. The new head of CARICOM says the community has signed on to the COVAX facility and looks forward to receiving its quota as soon as it becomes available in the new year. He says it has been demonstrated without a doubt that the answer to COVID is CARICOM. Prime Minister Rowley says in the recovery phase we must employ the same collective, coordinated and focused actions that allowed us to control the spread of the virus. Chief among these, he says, is the discipline to maintain the protocols that help us avoid being contaminated. The incoming head of CARICOM added we must look at making full use of the CARICOM single market and economy, CSME, as our principal means of recovery. He says... It is that confidence in ourselves and our institutions, our intellectual capacity and creativity, and the platform we have laid which will lead us on the path to recovery. The ongoing volcanic eruption in St. Vincent is occurring at the end of a year in which the entire Caribbean has had to implement certain travel protocols to mitigate against the COVID-19 pandemic. 
But Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez told a news briefing this week special adjustments had to be made for the scientists coming in to monitor the eruption at La Soufrière. He said they would not be quarantined in the strict sense of the word. It is important to get the three scientists on the ground tomorrow afternoon, evening, the latest, because they're going to do their COVID tests now in order to leave Trinidad and to enter St. Vincent, but there's a special protocol for persons in that situation. In other words, they're not going to be quarantined for, for 10 days, clearly, <laughs> because the exigencies of the situation. Um, and, and that's all in the protocol, too, you know, that in such situations like this, the, the chief medical officer will provide for them to function. They will, yes, as the commissioner points out, it would be a working quarantine. Working, W-O-R-K-I-N-G, quarantine. Um, so that we can get the important work done by them. And they're bringing in um, additional instruments. As you heard, I remind them, don't forget to bring the equipment on the plane for us to better be able to predict within the frame of science um, what is likely to happen. In the meantime, we stay on alert and we give Almighty God thanks and praise for all the blessings he has given to us amidst all the vicissitudes of life. This is not a time for lamentations. This is a time for us to draw our inner strength and our re resilience and help one another. It has been a challenging year. As Dr. Professor Robertson said, we have been able to deal with COVID well. We have the Sophia Volcano, it's there. And that also, we will, with God's blessings and his protection and with all of us working together I'm absolutely sure that we will meet this challenge successfully let's hope for the best and we're planning for if the worst takes place And geologist at the UWI Seismic Research Center in Trinidad, Professor Richard Robertson, says the effusive eruption at La Soufra in St. Vincent could go on for a while, but it has the potential to be an explosive eruption. Professor Robertson has been speaking with Education and Outreach Manager at the UWI Seismic Research Center, Stacey Edwards, on the ongoing eruption. Over the weekend, we had new magma, a new material from beneath the surface, slowly oozing out onto the surface and building up into a rounded mound that we call a dome, a small dome that is currently getting larger at the summit and in the crater of the super volcano. Okay, and is that an eruption? Would we say that the volcano is erupting? Yes, it would be having what we call an effusive eruption, a quiet emission of magma onto the surface. So it is erupting as it is now. And does it pose any threat or danger to the public, this effusive, quiet eruption? Is that a dangerous type of eruption? Well, all volcanic eruptions are dangerous to a certain extent, but the main danger from effusive eruption in the context of Soufre, because of where it's happening, it's in a confined crater. And so therefore the main danger is to people who are perhaps going into the crater, which they should do, or on the summit of the volcano. So in the immediate vicinity of the summit crater of La Soufre, is where the most dangerous things are because it's hot rock and it's emitting some gas which even if they become diluted they can overcome you if you're very close to it and close to the dome okay and so that's why we are strongly discouraging people from going to the volcano this time until there's any further update from the local authority and how is that different from an explosive eruption very different. An explosive eruption, again, magma is involved, but the magma has a lot more gas that is trapped in it. And what happens is that as it gets to the surface, it expands, it explodes, and the magma then explodes. And as instead of oozing quietly, it fragments and breaks up into pieces and explodes up into the air, creating ash 
pelting ash up into the air or else it collapses on the side forming pyroclastic flows. These things are usually hot, they, the ash gets very far and the flows get very far and they're very dangerous to people further along the flanks of the volcano. Mm. Okay, and so can, can this uh, current eruption, the effusive eruption, turn into an explosive eruption? Yes, that's possible. Sufre tends to have either an explosive eruption or a fusive eruption. It's not clear whether which one follows which. There's usually a, a gap in between. But, and the gap could vary from a few days, a few months, a few um, years. Uh, so it's possible for it to switch from, move from one to the next. And that's one of the things we'll be looking carefully to see any signs of it moving in that direction in the coming months. And what are we doing, um, we meaning the Seismic Research Center uh, in collaboration with NEMO? What are, what are the next steps? Well, the next steps at this stage, once the volcano starts erupting, is to, is to um, build up the monitoring network, or we say augment it, put in more stations, look at it more closely, make sure we have a team on the island that is looking at it most closely and also giving the authorities information. So you have a team that's going to be deployed there, putting in new seismic stations, new GPS, what we call GPS stations, to monitor deformation, looking at the gas, um, and looking at ways in which we monitor the changes in the shape and the, and the size of the dome. And what should the general public be doing at this time? Well, they should listen to the authorities, to Nemo, to Seismic, to the established authorities to find out what's happening. They should avoid going to the crater for sightseeing purposes, unless you have official reason for being amongst them. You shouldn't be there. You should avoid doing any kind of thing with the monitoring equipment. You really should leave it alone. Don't vandalize it. And you should be prepared of either the effusive eruption continuing for a little while longer, so so being in this uncertain mode, or else being prepared for it possibly going to explosive, in which case you may have to, depending on where you are in the volcano on the island, you may have to evacuate or move out of your or, or away from the volcano for a certain period of time while it's 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 in this explosive phase. And of course, all queries related to evacuation and shelters and all of that kind of information should be directed to the National Emergency Management Organization in St. Vincent. Um, and my final question is, of course, and my final question is, is this um, eruption, is this event in any way related to activity that has been occurring in Martinique? Because this has been a bit of activity in Martinique. Are there, is there any relation between the two? Simple answer is no, the volcanoes operate independently and they're not related in, in, in any physical way. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. We are resilient and we will get through this together. But these are stressful times and it's important to also practice good self-care. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, anxious or afraid. But there is hope. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, stay in touch with your community and know that you are not alone. We're in this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play, and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new All-In Bundle. With flow, it only gets better. To end the news, the headlines again, doctors continue to monitor cricketer Tyron Theophil as he remains in a coma following successful surgery in Martinique. UWI scientists say fusive eruption at La Souffre in St. Vincent can, ha, it has the potential to turn explosive. 
And incoming chairman of CARICOM, Dr. Keith Rowley, says we have the tools to make 2021 the year of CARICOM. You may access the news on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris. Thanks for your support and cooperation during 2020. We wish you a healthy, productive and prosperous 2021.